tape. We fabricate 10 foot track panels. Um, we have four guys working it, which will generally make a 10 foot section of the track in about 10 minutes. With guys pre drilling and screwing, spiking the rail down to the ties. Once they're uh, all attached to the ties, then we release the lever, allowing us to pick the entire 10 foot track panel out of the jig and uh, stack it and uh, we're now feeding new tie material into the machine what size are those ties i'm sorry what size are those These ties ties are 14 and three quarter inches and is that tall and that and it's a two by three inch tie and uh, by 14 and three quarter long now we will go ahead and lock down the ties by using the lever which is a loaded spring and rod assembly with stainless steel dogs on each tie which locks the tie to the machine. They're now very solid. The next thing in the operation we will make sure that the stop is down and we will run the twin routers down the length of the and link the ties that will leave a groove. We need to remove the screw here, uh, skip, screw gun. Uh, it will pre groove for the foot of the rail. So go ahead and give me the uh, screw gun. We've got one uh, tie here that has a screw in it that we need to remove. Okay. Now, I will go ahead and turn on the machine. It's a machine that has twin routers, and they will leave a groove in all of the ties. We'll make a pass, come back, then we'll set two rails in the grooves. And this gets a little noisy, but here we go. As you can see now, there are grooves in the ties. And these ties now will receive two pieces of rail. The foot of the rail will rest in the bottom of these grooves. Now, while these, these grooves aren't relied on 100% for gauging, it does help us gauge in the uh, screwing down uh, of this track rail. And what's that? That right there is a track gauge. This also is a track gauge with a level on it. This one is usually used in the field. This one they usually use in track panel manufacturing. Now, this is now roughly gauged. What we'll do now is we'll take the drill sets with an eighth inch pilot hole. We'll put down pilot holes on each one of these ties. Then we'll apply the screws, uh, thus screwing both rails down tight to the uh, ties. So you've got this gap in the rail here. What's that for? The gap right here? What we do is uh, when we go out to the field, 
Originally, what we were doing is we were leaving a one foot offset so that the next panel will drop into place and match up with this. But we found over the years that having this close a gap, we actually got kind of an up and down uh, right away. So what we do is once we're in the field, we will loosen one of these rails and move it to roughly where this gap now will be roughly about five feet offset from the other. We found that that gives a much stronger uh, track structure and a much smoother ride. Uh, once it's all ballasted, the ballast locking the ties to the ground, um, it works out real well. So uh, that, that's kind of uh, where we're at. So our next, uh, next process will be to uh, drill the pilot holes for the screws. Okay. Now, Mark, I see that these screws are being offset from one another from side to side. Why do you do that? The reason we do that is uh, it prevents the tie from trying to skew itself one way or another. If you had both screws in the same plane, each one of these, that would allow the tie to actually do this once it's in the ballast. By offsetting them, offset on each rail, that pretty much locks it into uh, a perpendicular situation to the rail and does not allow the tire to move around. Steamers has its own die, and any time that we need rail, we'll call Fort Scott, Kansas, at an extrusion plant that has our die. Uh, they will draw, we call them up, tell them, hey, we need 10,000 feet of rail. They'll draw 10,000 feet of rail. Uh, the rail has the correct profile. Uh, and when it's uh, ready, then uh, they ship it to us uh, by truck. stack it in piles and uh, as we begin to build track panels we begin to go through the pile of rail. What's different about Colorado Live Steamer Rail than West Coast Rail? West Coast Rail is a little bit wider on the foot of the rail, the bottom of the rail, and it's just a little bit wider head, the top of the rail. A little bit heavier web that is the vertical web in between the rail head and the foot. Uh, the Colorado Live Steamers, uh, from our very inception in 1969, had developed the rail profile and uh, at that time uh, represented that particular weight of rail that a railroad would be using. And uh, that's what uh, we've been using ever since. Uh, it, uh, it has a rating of about 435 pounds per axle weight, which um, pretty much translate to the largest live steam locomotive would have no problem on this rail. In other words, the rail would support, uh, if somebody was running a big boy or a Yellowstone, this rail would have no problem holding the weight of that 3,000 pound locomotive. What kind of uh, screws are you using here to We're fix the rail? A, using a stainless steel screw that has a, uh, I guess what you would call a Phillips washer head, uh, an inch and five eighths. We were early on using one inch, but we actually found through uh, the expansion of heat and contraction of cold, uh, and, and slight movement in the load bed over years, the one-inch screw would work its way loose, uh, allowing the rail to float a little bit. Uh, so we change it to a longer screw, the inch and five-eighths, which seems to hold uh, the track panel structure very well. We don't seem to have any problem as far as uh, things coming apart. Mm -hmm. 